Hi guys, less than a week to go to the end of lockdown. Many of you have been sitting at home dreaming about when you can get back out fishing. I know I certainly have, but the time's nearly upon us where the big reservoirs will be opening up and maybe you've only fished small waters in the past and you're thinking about giving the big reservoirs a go and that'll mean fishing from a boat. So I'm going to give you five bits of kit that's going to make your day a hell of a lot better. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, before we get into the bits of kit that's going to help improve your day, let's talk about the bare essentials, and we're talking life jackets. You must wear a life jacket while you're out boat fishing, it's uh, for your own safety, and many of the larger still waters now insist that before you even set a foot on the dock, that you've got to be wearing a life jacket. Now, many of them supply them for use on the day when you hire a boat, but if you're doing a lot of this sort of stuff, you're best buy your own, you get, you get the settings all right and it just makes it much more comfortable to wear. So, let's jump right in to the bits of kit that are going to help. Okay, number one, waterproofs. Now, I'm standing here on the banks of my lake at work actually, and uh, it's a fine day and you would think, well why would I need waterproofs? I've checked the weather forecast, there's no showers or rain forecast. I don't need waterproofs. Well, that's just simply not the case. On these larger still waters, especially early season, you can get quite big winds that will cause the, the water to form huge waves. And when you're motoring up and down those waves, it's like being in the North Sea. It's like somebody throwing a bucket of water over you. And I recall um, fishing a spring match a few years back where I, I was arguing with a, an intelligence officer, funnily enough, and he wasn't dressed appropriately and I said, look, you're going to get wet, you're not going to be comfortable, you're not going to enjoy your day. And he said, no, I'll be absolutely fine. I think he was wearing like a walking cagoule. It, it did make me chuckle at the time. But I was heading up the South Arm. Uh, many years that know Rutland Water or know the expanse of water I'm speaking of. And I didn't get as far as the peninsula before I decided to take him back to the dock because he was in the bottom of the boat in a quivering wreck because he didn't have the correct attire. Now, regardless of what the weather's doing, I've always got these with me, unless I'm absolutely positive we're in the middle of a heat wave and, and I, I definitely won't require them. So it's worth investing in a decent set of waterproofs. Number two then, boat seat. I'm using currently the Witchwood one. It has a, a back that folds out and it's a, it's a really comfortable boat seat. It, um, there's compression straps at the bottom to bind it to the thwart board and it's really comfortable. Now, I've used um, various boat seats over the years, the ones that go across the gunnels, and there's certainly pros and cons to both models. Uh, the one I liked about the ones that goes across the gunnels is I could have my pad in front of me with a watch and uh, you're in a higher seated position on the boat. Uh, so a boat seat's well worth investing in. If, like me, you've got to travel uh, a considerable distance for your day out, then you're going to spend the whole day, and the last thing you want to be doing is sitting on a plank of wood getting splinters in your arse. So uh, I would certainly say, get yourself a good boat seat. Number three then, uh, food and drink. So, uh, no, unfortunately guys, Peroni are not sponsoring the channel. I just like this beer and I had it in the garage so I brought it out to make my point. Food and drink, really important. If you're out all day, you know, you wouldn't go to work without taking your packed lunch or nipping out to Costa Coffee and getting a pastry and a cupper. So why would you go afloat without taking ample food and drink? Uh, if you're not hydrated enough, you tend to get really bad headaches, or certainly I do. So take plenty of water, enough food is to see you through the day, and uh, it'll just make your experience that much more enjoyable. So, food and drink, and if you like Peroni, take a one bottle, and the effects will have worn off by the time you come back in at nine o'clock at night to drive home.
Number four then, a drogue. Now it may well be that you have got a mind to just get your boat motor off to your favourite mark, throw the anchor over the side and fish for the day. And uh, you know, it's your money, you, you take your choice. But you really are missing out on one of the greatest aspects of boat fishing, and that's covering the water. And you can do that much more effectively with a drogue. Now I like to use this one, it, it packs away into its own little um, bag and it's the Witchwood Drogue and I've actually tied the two ropes together and I use that in conjunction with a couple of G-clamps and what does that do for me? Well basically if you've got a drogue that you can move it means that you've got to a certain degree you can steer the boat on the drift and uh, covering water means you're looking and hunting for fish whereas if you anchor up sure enough they may eventually swim round to within your casting distance but if you're drifting all the time there's always a chance that you'll be covering fresh fish. Number five then, a long handled net. Now this might seem like a a bit of a no-brainer and you may be thinking, Lindsay, what are you on about? Of course I'm going to take a net. But if you're used to fishing small still waters, then you might only have a short net that you're not used to. Now, on a boat, the longer the handled net, the better. I use uh, one of these, it's a big pan net and much akin to what the coast fishermen lads use. This is the Witchwood Boatman net and if I loosen the clasp on this, it extends out to a considerable length, making it much easier to net fish from a seated position in the boat. Now, uh, you might well say, well, I can just stand up or I can just lean over the side of the boat, but you know where I'm going with this. If you're leaning over the side of the boat and you slip, um, the, the bottom of the boat's wet, you can be over the side and go to point one <laughs> before I even started talking about the top five. Long handle nets are really important. Uh, a lot of the major reservoirs now, I know Grafham, Rutland, they are actually providing nets in the boats and that's to prevent invasive species spread. But if many of the other large still waters, you may have to bring your own net. So I would advise you pick up a long handled net. And that's my top five bits of kit that'll help make your day on the water a lot better. Well guys, that's my um, top tips if you're heading out on a boat this year. But if I've missed anything or you think there's something more important, please let me know in the comments section below. And if you're new to the channel, please think about subscribing. I would really appreciate your support. See you all next time.